The preparations necessary to make varies between models, but generally you want a single closed polysurface. If you click on any object, you will see here in the properties pane under the object properties, that is a, here it says the closed extrusion. If I explode this and rejoin it, you will see that it is a closed solid polysurface. A closed solid manifold polysurface is watertight in terms of its topology, with no holes or double facing surfaces, which makes it easy for Fusion 360 to determine how to generate a toolpath for it. A closed mesh also works. The main point is that the model that you export from Rhino should be identical to what you actually intend to mill. This means that if no spoiler board is used, the model's geometry should include at least 3 mm of completely unmilled material in the bottom of it, so as to make sure that no vacuum suction leaks are risked during milling. Let us show the demonstrative model at hand. Ctrl Alt H to unhide all. This is an open polysurface, courtesy of Erik Wingqvist, and it will be transformed into a closed solid polysurface model, suitable for CNC milling. The topology of the open polysurface adheres to the limitations of the free axis CNC milling. It has no overhangs, the relative depth of the cavities are not excessive, and there are no concave right angles which would not be accurately reproduced during fabrication. Make sure that you are working in a separate file, so as not to discard any prior work. Be sure to work in millimeters, since this is the unit the CNC machine expects to receive. The first thing to do is to make sure that the model is scaled to its intended fabrication scale. With the command bounding box, press enter to confirm, we see the extents of the geometry. The bounding box is about 32 meters times 35 meters with a height of, uh, from lowest point to top of it of about 2.8 meters. We aim to fabricate this in a scale of 1 to 100, so let us scale the geometry. Hold Ctrl and press Z to undo. Type the command scale to scale it proportionally. Type 0 to assign the base point of the origin so that it is scaled from the origin. Press Enter to confirm that. As a scale factor, since we are fabricating a scale of 1 to 100, we can simply input 1 divided by 100. Enter to confirm. Type ZS to zoom to selected objects. And enter bounding box to see here that the dimensions are correctly in scale. With the bounding box as our provisionary stock material, representing the piece of material that we will mill, we scale 1D, scale in one dimension only, from the bottom of it to the top of it. We'll look down here, what it says here in the distance, and then we simply input that 28.486 plus 1, so that we have a 1 mm margin above the top of the milled model. Enter to confirm. This makes sure that all of the top surface is milled down a minimum of 1 mm, so as not to leave high points unmilled. Knowing the actual thickness of the material that we are going to use as material stock, 49 mm, we can simply scale 1D the bounding box from the top and downwards. Scale 1D from the top and downwards to precisely 49 millimeters, so that its height is the same as the intended material stock. We can check how it looks in the ghosted view mode. Here we see that the bounding box extends one millimeter above the highest point of it, and it also extends down so as to replicate the actual height of the stock material. We can move this provisionary stock into a new layer We'll add a new parent layer called CAM, or CNC for that matter. CAM for Computed Aided Manufacturing, or CNC for Computed Numerically Controlled. Nonetheless, let's add a sublayer to it called Stock. And then we can assign this bounding box scaled in the height dimension to it. Then we can hide that layer and go back to shaded view mode. To make this open polysurface a closed one, we could simply duplicate border, extrude curve, extrude it far below, show the stock layer, select the extrusion, hold Ctrl and Shift while pressing S to activate the split command, select the stock bounding box, press space or enter to confirm, 
control click the above part and delete the below part, hide the stock layer again, join the original polysurface model and the extruded with control J or join, cap it, and it results in a closed solid polysurface. We could continue along this straight extrusion road, but for this example we want to slightly taper the outer wall. So we undo multiple all along to duplicate border. This sets us back to before duplicating the border, which we actually need. So we'll just hold Ctrl and press Y to go forward, one step in the undo order. Select the curve, copy, enter V or press the vertical here to constrict its copy movement in the vertical Z axis. Copy it to anywhere below, press space to confirm the command, select the copy, click this scale Z axis gumball icon and enter a value of zero. This will flatten the curve along the Z axis. Show the stock sublayer, move the curve with move command or M, simply M, move it vertically to the bottom of the stock. Then, with the gumball icon here for Z-axis movement, move it upwards an additional 3 mm, as to allow for the unmilled 3 mm bottom margin. We hide the stock sublayer again. And then with this flattened curve, we can try to offset it. And here we have to experiment with different distances by pressing D and space and entering a new distance, say 15. We can experiment with the look, with different looks of different offset values. Perhaps with 25, we'll achieve something to what we aspire to do. Click to confirm the offset. You can delete this original flat curve. Now find the point between the upper curve and the lower curve where a simple line could be made from corresponding points. So for example, here we have a clear edge segment and here we have one as well. So perhaps we can make a line from the top of it, somewhere along the middle of it to the bottom of it. Yeah, perhaps the perpendicular one here. All right, then we'll enter the command sweep two. This will make a sweeped surface along two rails. The first rail can be the uppermost, the second rail can be the lowermost, and the cross-section curve here should be the line that we previously made. Space to confirm. Now, usually the first result is subpar in many ways, but this can be easily fixed. Let's see here, having lost the orbit here, I'll just type ZS to recenter on the object. And that is easily solved by clicking this add slash button here. So then we can start with our start line here. And then we can see here that this should be more oriented in such a way. You just simply click on one point on the upper curve and the relevant, one, the relevant point here on the lower one. Let's see here if we zoom in a little. There perhaps. Yep, looking good. And here we can see in this curve here, perhaps there. And here things get skewed as well, so let's straighten it out. And here things get really wonky. So we can have one here that is vertical there. That turned out good. Here things are starting to get skewed again. See here, oh, but they turned really skewed here, so let's counter that by making one here, as well as one here perhaps. And then this one is pretty evident. And this is not as evident, perhaps we should make it like this, or perhaps just smoothen out like that. Here, perhaps to there. And here it already looked good. We can do like this, but it's a trivial one. 
here everything looks good. Here we can straighten this out a little. And perhaps the last one here, from there to here. All right, and press space to to confirm the um, the added slashes, and then you can click OK to confirm the actual sweep. Select both the sweep surface and the original poly surface one, and hold Control and press J to join these, same as a join command. And then with these two joined, we can simply type cap to cap it. And now it's a closed solid poly surface. Showing the stock sublayer, we can see that it is outdated in terms of x and y dimensions, but the z extents are still valid. Hiding the stock sublayer again, we make a new bounding box. Bounding box. And then we go to the top viewport, and uh, if you if you type ZS, you will zoom to selected objects. And here we can experiment with rotating the newly created bounding box so as to eyeball the rotation where it occupies the least area. Perhaps here, to make it clear, you can move it and scale it. It's the rotation that will get extracted anyway. See here, perhaps we can rotate it a little more. That. Let's see if we scale it down there, it still contains the whole geometry there, and along the other axis, we can see here if we scale this one a little, and perhaps there, and then move it down. Yeah, in terms of rotation, this looks like an adequate angle. The key here is to find an approximate rotation where the stock material requires the minimal amount of milling. Then we can rotate both the model and the bounding box to be orthogonal. So with the rotate command and any corner, if you uh, select uh, the other corner of the bounding box here, and make sure that you have ortho enabled here, you can simply confirm its orthogonal rotation here. These curves we can simply delete. When rotating the model and the bounding box to be orthogonal, Make sure that the long axis of the model is oriented along the global x-axis, which corresponds with the long axis of the CNC machine. Going back to the perspective viewport, and type Z and S to zoom selected, we can delete this custom scale bounding box, since it is not generated from the actual model, but custom scaled. Select the model and generate a new one. To add some margin on each side of the model, to allow for a sub-perfect placement of the material stock on the machine bed, or an imperfect setting of the work origin, to still yield an adequate milling, we can extract surface, extract the top surface here, delete the bounding box, duplicate the border of its top surface, delete the top surface, offset the border curve, offset, with a distance of 10 millimeters, delete the original curve, select last or simply click the offset curve, make it a planar surface, delete the curve, select the surface, show the stock sublayer, move the surface vertically to the top. It should be 1 millimeters as previously defined. Extrude surface down to the bottom of the provisionary stock. Going into ghosted view mode, we can see that our new bounding box, scaled and offset, serves as our new stock. Thus, we can assign it to the stock sublayer and delete the previous one. Now, we just need to make sure that there is 3 millimeters of unmilled material in the bottom. And to do that, we can simply scale 1D, the stock here, make sure that copy is on. And then selecting the two reference points, we can simply input 3. Enter to copy it, and then space to confirm. Select last to select the scale one, and assign it to another layer, so that we can hide the stock sublayer.
With these two closed solid poly surfaces, it's an easy feat to select the two of them and type the command boolean union, which will make unions of solids. Allowing it to process, we see that we have now one closed solid poly surface object. Go to stock sublayer again, select both the stock and the model, move from the lowermost, frontmost, and leftmost corner of the stock, move, to the origin by typing 0, and to confirm, set S to zoom to selected, verify that everything looks good according to what you intend to fabricate. Make sure that the model is oriented with its long axis along the x-axis. Make sure that the model is positioned correctly, extending from the origin to the x-positive and the y-positive. And then, with only the model selected, the stock is here for reference. With only the model selected, type export. This is the same as export selected. Go to the directory of your choice and make sure that the model you're exporting is in Rhino 5 file format for compatibility reasons with Fusion 360. Type perhaps uh, model cam or CNC for that matter. This concludes the second part of this tutorial series, demonstrating how to prepare your Rhino model for CNC milling at KTH Architecture School.